Hello and welcome to Pock and Rob. Today's video continues my series ranking the tracks of each solo Paul McCartney release. I've covered all the way up to London Town now, which means that the next episode is this one, Back to the Egg. Released in 1979, this is Paul's ninth solo release and the seventh and final Wings album. It wasn't a massive success, I believe it made top ten both sides of the Atlantic, and this release kind of divides McCartney fans. Many love it and think it's one of the better albums of his entire career. Others think it contains some of the worst songwriting of his career. And there's actually an argument to be made for both sides of that. For me, if you've ever seen my Paul McCartney ranking, you'll notice that it kind of pretty much comes slap bang in the middle. I, there's much to enjoy in this album. Before I go any further, I'll just remind you to like the video, subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications of future content. Strictly speaking, this is a 14 track album. However, two of them are double tracks. Controversially, maybe, I've decided to separate those double tracks and rank them individually. So I'm actually going to rank 16 tracks on this album. So number 16 is Broadcast. I don't understand why this was included on the album over other superior material like Cage, which to this day remains unreleased. Boring music on the background, two poems that are astonishingly badly read, like someone who really doesn't want to be there, especially the last two lines about the common man. And it's like somebody's reading a, like a racing commentator. It's an awful track. I don't skip it. I don't like it. And, it, and it's by no means of the level of something like Cook of the House, Girlfriend, Mumbo, or, or even the Nadir of Loop. But it's an odd track. And it's my number 16, the broadcast. At number 15, I have placed one of the tracks that's combined. It's Million Miles. Now, this was combined with After the Ball. I'll come to After the Ball later, but Million Miles is so disparate to After the Ball that I don't understand what McCartney was doing in combining the two. They don't seem related to me, both lyrically or musically. A million Miles, I dislike, but I will come to After the Ball, which obviously I like more than this a little bit later. Track number 14 is the album opener, Reception. Now, I've made a point on previous videos of the importance of an opening track on an album. For instance, Band on the Run, title track, opens that album and is a guaranteed good time. Big Barn Bed suggests the kind of album that Red Rose Speedway probably should have been. And likewise, Let Em In at the start of Wings at Speed of Sound is a great opening track thematically and in terms of its concept. And so I do get why reception is up front. I think there is a better opening track, which I will come to shortly, as far as the track itself concerned, I really like the bass work on this and the riff and the... It's a really good sounding track with the annoying background of them trying to tune the radio. I get the point of that. And it's one of the few tracks that I kind of wish was longer. I, I do like the melodicism in this track, but it's short and pretty much inconsequential. Reception, number 14. At number 13, I've placed track three from the record, which is We're Open Tonight. Perfectly fine little song, quite short. I like the fact that it's something we're going to revisit, and I will come with that again a little bit later. And the fact that we revisit We're Open Tonight later on in the album suggests to me that this would have made a better opening track to the record than Reception. We're Open Tonight, 13. And number 12, I have placed Spin It On from Side One of the Record. It's kind of punky rock. I used to detest this, but I've grown to like it as I've grown to like a lot more of McCartney's rocker tracks over the years. I have no idea what the lyrics are about. Their cousin, cousin their cousins couldn't get on down to the hangar. It's, it's a very, very strange song. I don't think Paul knows what they're on about. That said, the guitar work from Lawrence Juba is fantastic. The drum work from Steve Holly is brilliant. This was a good incarnation of Wings, and there was so much more to come. If you want to know what I think was potentially in the future, then click the link to go and watch Wings on High. But spin it on, number 12. 
Now, at number 11 is a Grammy Award winning track, and that is Rockestra theme. One thing's for sure, Rockestra sounds big. And it should as well, given the talent that is involved in this. And there is rumours that these Rockestra tracks are the reason why we don't have Back to the Egg Archive yet, because there are some licensing issues. So, we have so on this track, we have got Pete Townsend from The Who. We've got Kenny Jones, who was the replacement drummer in The Who, who used to be in The Faces. John Bonham from Led Zeppelin and John Paul Jones. There's Hank Marvin from The Shadows. There is Dave Gilmore. It's, I think, the first time that Dave Gilmore appears on a McCartney record. It will not be the last. And whilst it's a really enjoyable piece of music, it's totally out of place on Back to the Egg. It doesn't match the rest of the record. An odd track on an ignored album that won a Grammy. And at number 10 is the other Rockestra track, which is so glad to see you here. Now, this is a better track for me than Rockestra, only just. Again, big, bold and brash. One thing I do wonder is that that last bit of the track, which revisits We're Open Tonight, is actually just wings. There seems to be, when I listen to it, a, a very clumsy splice between what is Rockestra and what is just wings. And... It's a bit incongruous. Again, this track, whilst it does at least revisit a theme from earlier on in the album, the rockestraness of it is a little bit incongruous. And I believe that there is a better Back to the Egg to be found. And at some point, I will do a reimagined on Back to the Egg and where I think there is a absolutely cast iron brilliant album lurking in all of this Back to the Egg material. Some of which, of course, is still unreleased. At number nine, I have placed a track very similar to Spin It On, which is To You. I've always seen these as a bit of a two sides of the same coin. Very similar feel, very similar nonsense in the, in the lyrics. If anything, it's that little bit more punky than Spin It On. Reminds me of The Clash somewhat. And Paul's vocal is interesting. It's almost scratchy. And to be honest, the vocals on much of this album are not his best. But number nine, to you. And number eight, I have placed a gorgeous little ballad that is part of one of those two songs in one. It's Winter Rose. It's one of his nicest piano-led melodies. His voice, again, sounds a bit weird. Bass is great, lovely strings in it. There's, a, there's a, a portentousness to this song. It feels a little bit heavy in some ways. But Love Awake actually resolves it. I do think it's the lesser of the two tracks. Number eight, Winter Rose. And number seven, I've placed After the Ball. Now, I think After the Ball is a perfectly fine track that is dragged down by its coupling with Million Miles. It's a good track, a little bit more time and work could have really stood alone and been so much better than just half a song. Great guitar work and I thoroughly enjoy After the Ball. At number six, I have placed Love Awake, which is the last of these combined tracks that um, I'm treating as separate tracks. Love Awake is a really nice love song and it gives the lift and and positivity that I think is needed after you've just listened to Winter Rose which had that slightly dark feeling to it it these two work together that said I would much rather have had Love Awake longer more fleshed out because I think this could have been the real one of the real peaches of the album Love Awake number six at number five, I have placed the single that was released and stiffed. It is Old Siam Sir. Good, powerful track, great band performance, punky. The bass guitar absolutely drives the record. The lyrics are not up to much. But it was also a poor choice of lead single. I can't imagine this being a hit. 
And so why it was released as a single when there was better material that could have been, which we will come to, it's a it's a decent rock track and it's a good album track. It is not a single. Old Siam Sir, my number five. And number four, I have placed the US single, Arrow Through Me. This was the first time that Paul's releases had deviated from country to country. At this point, I think he was on Columbia Records. And so Columbia were not beholden to kind of matching what EMI Parlophone did in the UK, like Capital might have been. And so they released Arrow Through Me. And it's a better choice of single. I still think it would have flopped in the UK. It was the B-side to Old Siam, sir. And... Arrow Through Me is one of a, one of Paul's lesser known classic tracks, I think. His voice doesn't sound great on this, in my opinion. I think it, again, sounds scratchy. And finally, we come to my top three, all of which I think are absolutely top draw songs. And at number three, Baby's Request. So this is a 20s, 30s vaudevillian style song that fits in with his stable of vaudevillian songs like You Gave Me The Answer or Honey Pie from the White Album. And I think Baby's Request is divine. I love the melody. I love the, the chord structure in the sequence. It totally works. This was released as a double A-side single. The second one from the record, which of course was a failure as a single. But... It's a really good track. I like the way it ends the record. This was included at the expense of Cage. I would not have ditched Baby's Request, but I would have ditched something else to include Cage. But Baby's Request, I think, is fantastic. My understanding is the only member of Wings on this is Paul. I don't know if that's true or not, and hopefully in the archive we might well find out. He revisited this for the Complete Kisses of Kisses on the Bottom from 2011. And number two, I have placed Getting Closer, the second track. I love Getting Closer. It is in my top 10 McCartney 70s songs. It might even, on a particular day, make my top 10 McCartney songs ever. I don't care that there's some nonsense lyrics, like Cattle Beware of Snipers. I love the feel of this song. I love the drive in it. I love it. This should have been the lead single. And I think had he released this as the lead single, he'd have had a hit on his hands and a bigger success for Back to the Egg. And possibly Wings would have gone on to do some more and he'd no longer have been a bit bored. So much energy. There is an absolutely fantastic bootleg version of this out there where there is additional verses and some of them are sung by Denny. Archive. Got to bring out the archive, Paul, because Back to the Egg needs that archive. It needs the re-evaluation it will get. Getting closer at number two. And at number one, it's not a Paul song. It's a Denny song, and it's again and again and again. We are seven studio albums into Wings. It's the final Wings album, as it turned out. And we finally reach my all-time favourite, Denny Lane composition. I love Again and Again and Again. Apparently this was two separate songs that Denny was writing and Paul, as Paul does, suggested he put them together and we get a terrific band performance, a terrific Denny vocal. It just shines. And this is, I think, the second time in my run through the Wings albums where it's been a non-Paul track that I've played as being my favourite. That's not to say I don't enjoy the Paul tracks. Of course I do. I'm a McCartney fan. But I love what he brings to other people's songs as much as I love his own songs. And what he brings to again and again and again is just brilliant bass playing and harmonies. And this was Denny's towering achievement in Wings. And it's my number one from Back to the Egg. So that concludes my track-by-track track rundown of Back to the Egg and, as it turns out, Wings. The next video will obviously be moving into McCartney 2 with the resumption of Paul's true solo career. In the interim, I'm probably going to look at doing a Back to the Egg, my version on a reimagined. 
I think it's really kind of ripe for it. I've been waiting to do this video for a while, but I wanted to do my ranking of the tracks first so you've got an idea of what's going to definitely get included. Before you go, remember to hit the thumbs up to like the video, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We are nudging towards 50 and next week's video will be 50 to 41 of my all-time favourite songs and my son's all-time favourite songs. So it'd be great if we hit 50 subscribers before we hit the 50th track in our rundowns. Remember to hit the bell to receive notifications and I'll be back in a week with my son for the next one in our top 100 tracks of all time. Thanks for watching.